When you live by polls, all he ever does, a majority of Americans want, insert his policy here with no way to pay for it. Guess what? You die by the polls. Yeah. And right now, Donald Trump is doing well in the polls, and we've seen that Bernie folds like a cheap suit if someone boos him, because that's where all of his self-worth is tied up. I do think that Donald Trump is going to win 2020. Uh, I, I feel that I can declaratively state that at this point. But let me tell you kind of why. And I do want to know what, what you think out there. I, I'm definitely more confident than, than at this point last year. I wouldn't say 100% because I don't want to be embarrassed, but you guys apparently don't have a problem with it. Thank you, Hall. Um, <laughs> but I am more confident because things have changed. I used to say that Bernie would be the hardest candidate for Donald Trump to beat. I thought Elizabeth Warren would be the easiest. Uh, I still think that remains true, but I think that Bernie Sanders is actually far easier to beat than he would have been this time last year, which we'll get to in a second. But really, I want to be very clear here. Don't get complacent, folks, because now you have some people out there saying, for example, all these people in this studio saying 100 percent, they're lying. They're just not honest people. My point is, don't think because Bill doesn't get to vote yeah. three million times. It's still only one vote. Ah. So you need to go out and vote. Don't yeah, get complacent you know with this. But thus far... Here's the first point as to why I think Donald Trump will be president in 2020. Um, and you've heard me be critical of him when I think it's necessary. I'm not a cheerleader. I've talked about when I think he, he runs the risk of, of, of losing. Thus far, the Democrats, the debates, it's just been an absolute mess. Let's talk, raising let's talk about the minimum that. wage no, to I'm a living to wage. To the question Do we think building really the millions of this units really of affordable housing no, if, if that we need? That Do we think question, raising taxes on no, 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 Next question. No, no, no. Next question. No, no, no. Next question. No, no, no. She looks like she's wearing a stuntman no, no, no. helmet. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would like Senator to Warren and Mayor Bloomberg, this is your question for you. I want to talk about, and maybe this is appropriate. Can I just? Okay. No, no, stop. Look at this. You knew when you bought it they'd done that. I've got to this question. Yeah. Look, that looks like a pre-fight press conference. It's amazing. <laughs> With Tom yeah. Steyer. W they've done something Horrible. remarkable. Democrats, it's a miracle. They've made President Trump seem sane and like the only adult in the room. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Like you watch these debates a, and you go, man, this is like, we, we need some reason here. Can someone bring in President Trump? <laughs> <laughs> so the only front runner we have right now is Bernie, okay? Let's talk about this kind of this, this schism. Um, he caused, he's caused this massive rift in the Democratic Party, okay? So you have, a you have these other Democrats or they call them now establishment Democrats, as they used to be known, all non-Bernie Democrats. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have talking heads who are basically saying that Bernie Sanders, who's the front runner, is a stooge, a Nazi, he's a, he's a tool for Putin. B basically, pretty similar to uh, everything that they threw at Donald Trump. The happiest person right now is about 1.15 Moscow time. This thing is going very well for Vladimir Putin. I promise you. He, 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 he's probably staying up watching us right now. How you doing, Vlad? <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely right. And so James, there's reporting that that's oh, someone exactly turned that into a gross what the gift. intelligence agencies think is going on. <laughs> I mean, I got a in my teeth. that Putin um, is helping him or plans to help him right. in the primary. What happens if Bernie Sanders wins? I'm pretty sure he has a lot to say about billionaires. Uh, no one but Bernie, Stephanie. Come on. He's an anarchist. He would love to burn down the United States. I'm reading last night about the fall of France in the summer of 1940, and the general, Renault, calls up Churchill and says, it's over. Do they want Bernie Sanders to take over the Democratic Party in perpetuity? Well, I mean, he takes it over. He sets the direction for the future of the party. Maybe they'd rather wait four years and put in a Democrat that they like. Chris Matthews always seems surprised that he has that job. <laughs> like, huh? Oh, really? What do you think of Bernie Sanders? Like, well, what are you doing? What? <laughs> How did I get What's here? What's the red light? Is it Christmas? That's the camera light. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> so you have yeah. Bernie on the flip side uh, and all of his supporters, right? And I understand the pushback. But this is what's, why it's only going to get worse, I think, for the Democrats, at least for the time being, until they narrow this down, um, where they accuse all non-Bernie supporters of being establishment and centrist or just flat out evil billionaire elitists. That's their attack. As you may have noticed lately, the establishment's getting a little bit nervous. I wanted to go back um, to what you said about our left party. We don't have a left party mm. in the United States. Mm. The Democratic Party is not a left party. Mm -hmm. She says um, while literally sitting to the left of that gentleman. <laughs> is he like eating a hot party pocket? Is that why he's eating? Mm. <laughs> hot pockets are great. He burnt his mouth party. on a pizza pocket. There are a lot of folks who are concerned about his rise and his surge, especially among young voters, that this may be causing some trouble for the establishment. Does that concern you at all? Well, we need to cause trouble for the establishment because the establishment is who we're fighting against. It has come up from a, a, a candidate who almost all of the establishment has pinned their main hopes on, 
And he's talking about bribing politicians in a positive way. Mm. Yeah. He's like, now remember he's Goldman Sachs. Yeah. He's talking to Goldman Sachs. He didn't have to repeat it, they all already knew. Remember Goldman Sachs, what you do with politicians is you bribe them. Because we wouldn't want to talk to people at Goldman Sachs. Mm. <laughs> no. That would be absolutely absurd. <laughs> Establishment <laughs> is just the word that they throw. And here's the crazy thing compared to Donald Trump, because I know this has been talked about with Donald Trump, he's anti-establishment. But there's, there's something to it, right? There's, a, there's some teeth to it, because if you're anti-establishment as a conservative, as an outsider, as a Republican, you're actually trying to some degree tear down the system. You're actually trying to some degree to shrink the role of the establishment in D.C. When Bernie complains about the establishment, it's because he yearns to be that. <laughs> He wants to have, or, or Bloomberg, when they talk about the establishment, they want to determine what sodas you can drink. Whenever yeah. someone says pro-choice, I won't use that term. They're pro-abortion. I'm pro-life, they're pro-abortion. They're not pro-choice when it comes to what car you can drive, what kind of soda you can drink, what you can pay in taxes, where you can send your charitable donations. They're not pro-choice in any other facet hmm. outside of ending the life of another human being inside your stomach, right? They're not pro-choice at all. It's remarkable to me. They're anti, how, do you, how can you be anti-establishment, just like Rage Against the Machine, when they campaign for Obama? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Rage yeah. against the machine by endorsing it. <laughs> Except for this machine. Yeah. I used to think Bernie would be tough. Why? Let me t explain mm -hmm. to you, and this was a lot, if you go back um, and watch the, the segments, I thought, okay, Hillary Clinton lost a lot of states that surprised me. For example, Michigan. Um, I think Bernie does well in those states because of the unions, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's easy to appeal to unions yeah. as a socialist right. more. A lot of the unions just believe that Hillary Clinton was an elitist. And the same thing with Michael Bloomberg, right? I don't think that Hil Michael Bloomberg has any chance of w winning the Rust Belt. Um, I think Bernie has a better choice, or at least I thought he would have had a better choice to win the Rust Belt um, against Donald Trump, and that's kind of what he needs to win this election. Here's the thing, though. Now we've reached a different point. He's a socialist revolutionary, right? Self-described. Right, yeah. Well, a revolution means a 180 change in direction. It means you've got to change everything because nothing's working, but 90% of Americans don't want that right now. 90% of Americans are satisfied with their own personal finances. Right. Things are getting better for the average American, a lot better. The tax cuts, they reduced inco the income tax bill for, by the way, not just the super wealthy, the median income households by nearly 60%. Wow. Record low unemployment, also layoffs, also high job participation yeah. rate. We have increases in household income, wage growth, record-breaking stock market. On top of that, we have people who are finally take note of how good the economy is, according to a poll, because Mr. Sanders is almost entirely determined by polls. If you look at his policies, it's like, well, if you look at 80% support, 90% of the, of the th th that's a lot of people. It's like almost all. We understand, Bernie, that you had a bad <laughs> high school experience and now you want some friends. All right, we get it. Just like you're the guy who shows up to a party with an acoustic guitar, puff, 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 pass. You're a piece of shit. That's my point, okay? But here's the thing. The Trump economy right now, he actually has the highest economic approval rating of any president in the last 20 years. Wow. Overall approval right now, That's gonna 49%. Be tough to fight. Of, yeah, his overall approval rating, and if you compare his disapproval, way better than Barack Obama at this point huh. in yeah. his presidency. So it's really hard. I don't know what the argument is. And this is why you see that letter that was being circulated from, from Nancy Pelosi. If you were saying, I'm a socialist revolutionary, I need to change this system, that would make sense after the economic collapse. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're going back to the stock market crash in uh, 2008. Uh, okay. Absolutely. It doesn't really make sense that we're going to tear this whole system down and start anew when it's better than it's ever been, according to 90% of Americans. I think Bernie Sanders is far less appealing right now, mm. and the numbers should startle them. And I think it's important to note, by the way, this has been a boat turnaround. So if you want to talk mm -hmm. about the radical change, the radical, well, first off, let's go back through history. The radical idea was this idea of a free society, a free enterprise. Mm. We didn't want royalty. We didn't want what effectively developed into what we now now know as European socialism. I know that didn't exist back in the day, but we were talking about an oppressive government who had too much control of people's lives. This country was a great experiment in that we said, government limited. The role, I've described this before, it's like a hockey referee, right? You keep the pace of the game, make sure the players are safe, otherwise you keep your mouthpiece in, period. You keep your, uh, your, 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 your mouthpiece, your whistle. Well, I was like, what's the word? My weenie whistle. whistle. The whistle, the, the rape whistle in That's hockey. Good. You keep it in your pocket. In other words, you do not overly invade people's lives. You don't call fouls or you don't call no. penalties that have nothing to do with the action around the puck. If someone's not hurting anybody, that's not the role of the government, right? It's a very libertarian stance. That is the role of the government. Then we had Barack Obama, and by the way, not just Barack Obama, 
You could also toss George W. Bush in there, and you could toss Bill Clinton in there. They were all pretty big government Republicans. Yeah. I have to acknowledge that. I think a lot of people do. And then Donald Trump campaigned on reversing that course. And here's the thing. Before Donald Trump, I was worried that you would never have any other conservative. And now we see Generation Z is going to be the most conservative generation ever. Why? We had a lot of people, baby boomers, right? If people look at boomers now, mm -hmm. it's become, okay, boomer, which is so disrespectful. It's like, really? Really? You're texting that from the phone who would, that it was created by boomers, you ass? <laughs> Okay, Boomer. You mean like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, you ungrateful little <laughs> pissant? So, well, Bernie's actually older than a Boomer, that's right? That's true. So yeah. that's why they're, yeah. you know, Right. I guess confusing. people would say to him, okay, greatest uh, generation of all time. But not you, though. Um, <laughs> so I think it's important to note, like, baby Boomers were really, really liberal. They were the ones putting the daisy right in the, right, in the rifle. Yeah. They were flower power. And then what happened? They experienced Jimmy Carter. And then they experienced Ronald Reagan. So they had contrast. And then they became more conservative when they got older. And I was always concerned when I grew up. I was saying, man, we don't really have that in our lifetime. We have Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. There's not really that strong of a contrast. And then we had Barack Obama that was a continuation of that. And yeah, he's definitely more charismatic. So I thought young people, since they don't have the contrast of conservatism versus leftism, they're not going to naturally revert back to being conservative as they get older like baby boomers did. Mm -hmm. All that's required for people to be more conservative as they age is that they witness it. But up until Donald Trump, no one had witnessed it or anything even close to it. But here's the thing. When Bernie Sanders talks about being a revolutionary, no, no. The revolutionary sort of about face, the change was Donald Trump going in and it's what they bitch about. The slashing of regulations, the slashing of taxes for people across the board. This is very new for people who might be in their early 20s entering the workforce, where now, even if they're liberal, they, they have this as a baseline. And then what happens if there's another Barack Obama or another Bernie Sanders who yeah, admitted that right, anyone right. making over 29,000 is going to see a drastic increase in taxes, go back to our segment on that, with universal health care, Medicare for all. So if you have a 22-year-old liberal today who thinks that he likes Bernie Sanders, but he's getting X amount in his paycheck, then Bernie becomes president and it's X minus 20%, 10%, guess what? You've made a conservative for life. Right. Hmm. So I think it's important to realize that the rock against Bush, no FX, rage against the machine, they are, against, they are the machine. Bernie Sanders is offering nothing new, and the good thing here is it is going to create more conservatives in this generation than I think we've ever seen. And now, since the polls aren't good for Bernie and they're good for Donald Trump, Bernie has decided to not so much focus on the economy. He is determined to make sure that you know um, he's going to get, do everything in his power at least, you no know, promises, to get an F rating from the NRA. I have today a D minus voting record from the NRA. <laughs> 30 years ago, I likely lost a race for the one seat for Congress in Vermont, because 30 years ago I opposed, I supported a ban on assault weapons. We must be aggressive on gun safety, not be dictated to by the NRA. And I am proud that I have a D minus voting record from the NRA. If elected president, it will get worse than that. Ladies and gentlemen, you're F president. <laughs> hey, by the way, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed here on YouTube uh, and hit all notifications because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. And do consider joining Mug Club. I know a lot of you enjoy the Thursday show. We have shows behind the paywall every day and similar podcasts. to this. And podcasts. Oh, yes. uh, so much more. Com slash Mug Club. And uh, of course, there's there's uh, Mark Levin. You have Dave Rubin. You have Ali Stuckey. You have Roman Millennial. You have Glenn Beck. You have all kinds of people over there. Uh, we try to give you your dollars worth. And we're not funded by a foreign caliphate. No. So, you know, but we'll take it, Al. Jazeera. <laughs> I know if that you're I know you're, just, out. you're in the red. You're just hemorrhaging money. That Young Turks investment isn't quite paying off. YouTube had to step in with their news <laughs> initiative, but yeah. we can do it. Um, <laughs> we'll even wear the funny hats. Oh, so yeah. uh, here's something else I think people are forgetting. A lot of people don't realize, I don't want to say he's a good debater, but Donald Trump is a very effective debater. Yeah, yeah. And you have that, you have some people like this who are, who are, for example, an analogy would be boxers. Hmm. Like, if, I would love to have George Foreman on the show. I think he's, he would be one hmm. of the best guests ever. George Foreman was criticized for not being a great boxer. Hmm. That's, that may or may not be true. He was a very effective boxer. Hmm. A lot of people said he, he just had that power, but bacon, what he would though. do is he would use a sort of cross guard. He would go in and he would use a technique that kept himself safe that didn't really look pretty, but... He knocked everybody out before Ali, pretty much. And then he won the heavyweight championship at 42. So do not underestimate how effective Donald Trump can be on the debate stage. Whoever it is, in watching these debates, I think he'll eat their lunch. So for comparison, <laughs> yeah. I want you to look at uh, how Bernie Sanders reacted to, to boos from the crowd at this week's debate. What I said is what Barack Obama said in terms of Cuba that Cuba made progress on education. Yes, I think 
Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no comparison. <laughs> bad. He's, what? he's blaming really? the Castro Don't regime. Look. And by the way, Bernie will say, only in this capacity. In any capacity! In any capacity at all! He's praising the Castro regime, and people yeah. boo. And like, it's, he's almost like Chris Matthews. Not yeah. like, really? <laughs> yes, really! I understand. <laughs> yes, really, you crazy old coot! So that's him reacting to boos. Now let's compare this with a stacked audience, exactly Donald Trump in the same scenario. Uh, this was someone actually a Bernie fan, I think. He, he tweeted this out, it said, Twitter, does Bernie Sanders need to do this if the booing doesn't stop? And this is the clip. Let me talk, quiet. <laughs> 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 That's all head these donors on. and special interests out there. <laughs> so, that's what it is. That's, and that's by the way, what let me is? just tell you, we needed tickets. You can't get them. You know who has the tickets for the, I'm talking about to the television audience? Donors, special interests, the people that are putting up the money. So it is. The RNC told us we have all donors in the audience. And the reason they're not loving me. Look at this. The reason yeah. they're not, excuse me. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Loving Low energy is, I don't jab, want man. their money. I'm going to do the right thing for the American public. I don't want their money. I don't need their money. And I'm the only one up here that can say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knows the real audience is yes. in the room. That's it's a not, very, it's not those people there. Yes. That's yeah. a very, yeah. He knows the audience of people watching at home. That would, yeah. that couldn't have been more embarrassing for Jeb Bush if Donald Trump rested his scrotum and testicles <laughs> on his forehead on national television. <laughs> yeah. mm. And this has changed right. politics. I think yep. a lot of people just say, oh, Donald Trump went against the establishment. No. Yeah. It's important, obviously, a lot of these people have consultants. A ground game is talked about a lot, right? Mm. People talk about a ground game. It's not as important as it used to be. Now, the ground game won Ted Cruz, Iowa. Great, I think it won Bernie, Iowa, if I'm not mistaken, with Hillary Clinton. Mm. I know Rick Santorum won Iowa back in the day when and then yeah. it ended up being Mitt Romney. So that's important, but guess what? With the internet now, everything you say at any point is the ground game because people in Iowa will see that. People in New Hampshire will see that. Yeah, and Donald yeah. Trump understood he didn't need to speak to the moderators. He didn't need to speak to people in the audience. He needed to speak to people at home, which is ironic considering that Bernie fancies himself, you know, a man of the people. And he was so flustered by these donors there in the audience booing him. You, you shouldn't care. You shouldn't care about it. It should not be less relevant. The people at home are the ones who matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is what was interesting, too. Replies were from people on Twitter. Uh, the response is a couple of saying, holy crap, no wonder he got elected. Look at all these people responding on Twitter. Wow. So for a lot of these folks, this is another reason I think that Donald Trump is going to win. This is the first time in three years they've actually watched Trump in a debate instead of a clip that CNN has sliced and diced to make him look bad. Right. This is this. These disasters that are Democratic debates are forcing Americans who are not necessarily pro Trump to go. Oh, right. OK, I'm not getting any out of this. Let me see what Donald Trump has to say, as opposed to playing that game of telephone with Don Lemon saying what Donald Trump has to say. Yeah. And you see the reaction. They're going, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what? Not only is that a good point, this is going to be really hard to deal with. And most importantly, it shows that President Donald Trump has faced the exact same situations as you see with Bernie Sanders, and he's handled them far better. But it is remarkable. This is, we can see a direct comparison. Booze from a stacked crowd with Bernie, booze from a stacked crowd with Trump. It's very rare that before the actual debate of the two candidates, once they go through the primaries, that you get to see the exact same scenario for a comparison, for a contrast. We have that there, and it begs the question, why can Trump just speak through the booze and not care at the exact same issue Whereas Bernie shrinks into his suit like Tom Hanks at the end of Big. <laughs> so let's go through the candidates real quick. We have to get to Gavin McInnes. Um, Warren, let's say any of these people, she's obviously probably not going to be the candidate. Warren, Trump wins. Why? Because he just bull rushes her, right? She, right he's not yeah. going to walk it back. The closest we have is, uh, from an apology from Trump is with Carly Fiorina. Yeah, and all he said was, yeah. you got a good face. She's good. She's got a good face, right? Because he knew she was going to go after him. Yeah. Warren, he's not going to back away from Pocahontas. He's, he's not going to back down. away. He's <laughs> only going to get where she he has no chance. Down. Pete Buttigieg, no spine, no way he can handle it. It's going to look like a father spanking a child. And, you know, it, it, I hate this. It looks like it look butt gig. Also, every time they turn to him, I expect him to answer with, we can hardly stand the way. Please press my stop. Be late. Men's butts. And you're like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I also don't think he's gay. I think is I think he's the only straight man whose gay husband is a beard. <laughs> You're talking about Chastin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Kl Klobuchar, uh, she's kind of an unpredictable one here. I think she would actually probably be the hardest candidate for Trump to beat. I don't think it's like that she's a nominee. What would Donald Trump do with Klobuchar? Just make stuff up. That's probably what he would do, yes. let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's like, she's an unknown. Uh, let me look through the oppo. They would hand him up a research. He'd go, no. 
I think I'm going to say that she's contaminating drinking water. <laughs> what? Aaron Brockovich tried to stop Club and Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm winning. <laughs> um, Mike Bloomberg. I think Mike Bloomberg, if he's a nominee, some people think he might. I think he defeats himself. Listen, this guy, yeah. is, this Honestly, guy yeah. is Midwest poison, especially yeah. if he picks Hillary Clinton as a running mate. If people saw Hillary Clinton as an elitist, I don't know how they couldn't see that with Mike Bloomberg. And by the way, he didn't ban big gulps. This isn't a lot of people. He banned drinks over 16 ounces. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. What a dick, right? That's no good. And then as it comes to Bernie, <laughs> okay, this is, a, this is, a, Bernie, listen, we have a socialist revolutionary who wants to revolutionize the way we are living in America, which is the best economy that we've had on record, safer, no major wars, we're doing better than ever. I think that his whole pitch is unappealing, and he's also basically a pinko commie who went on his honeymoon to the USSR, and now we know is fearful of the crowd. When you're in when you live by polls, all he ever does, a majority of Americans want, insert his policy here with no way to pay for it, guess what? You die by the polls. Yeah. And right now, Donald Trump is doing well in the polls, and we've seen that Bernie folds like a cheap suit if someone boos him, because that's where all of his self-worth is tied up, and I don't think he's going to be as popular as he thinks he's going to be. I think it's a walk-off for Donald Trump, barring something completely unforeseen. No, your screen's not frozen. This is one of those, this is one of those moving pictures. Talkies. See that? Okay, uh, there's a video playing somewhere in a box. Subscribe, hit the notification bell uh, if you are subscribed because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. But we really do love having you on this channel. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this Bernie video because I know he didn't. Um, and I can, you know, I can still live with myself. It didn't freeze, it's still me. Okay, click one of the things.